In this video, we're going to build a simple Hello World app in C++ with Marmalade. We'll create a new project, test and debug it in the desktop simulator, and then deploy to iOS, Android, and Windows 8. All of this will be from a single project, single code base, and using a single IDE. Let's get started. The first time we use Marmalade, we need to configure a few options. Marmalade has a desktop app called The Hub that manages projects and configurations. So let's fire that up now. I'm using a Windows PC today, but the tool looks exactly the same and works exactly the same on a Mac. Before starting a project, let's open the dependency checker. For C++, we need an IDE installed, both for editing code and for compiling for desktop. I've installed Visual Studio Community 2013, which is picked up here. There's no need to install the Android or iOS SDKs, but for Windows 8 platforms, we do need the relevant tool chains. Nicely, these all come as part of Visual Studio Community, and you can see them all listed here. If I was using Visual Studio 2010, for example, I'd need to install those SDKs separately. For Android, we need Java, so I've installed the Java SDK and set the path to it here. For iOS, we need a cert and a key for development. I got these from my Apple developer account. On Windows, I used the iPhone sign request tool that ships with Marmalade. On a Mac, you would just use the regular keychain tool. That's it. We can install additional tools for extending the SDK and debugging if we want to, but that's for another video. Let's create our Marmalade C++ project. Pick C++ here. This shows my recent projects. I'll hit New Project and give it a name. I'm just going to call it Hello World. On the right here, you can see there's a number of templates for different kinds of template projects. We can go from an empty C++ project through to things like a Cocos 2DX project. I'm going to use IWGX, which is some optional 2D, 3D middleware that ships with Marmalade. Hit Create, and it builds the project for me. This screen here lets us configure the project, build it, run it on the simulator, and deploy it to a device. The platforms list here lets me pick what I'm currently targeting. I'm going to leave it on Simulator for testing on the desktop. This build box here lets me switch between a debug and release build of my app. The only difference is that the debug build includes logging and assertions. In the release build, those just compile out to nothing. I could build and run directly from the hub here, but there isn't any code yet. So let's hit Open an IDE to fire up Visual Studio. Here we see our project in Visual Studio. It looks like a pretty standard Visual Studio project, but it's using Marmalade's toolchain. We can see a Hello World CPP file that's been generated with some very basic framework code. Above here, we can see Marmalade system. This is the abstraction layer APIs. It includes things like audio, camera, clipboard, compass, video, location, and so on. And above that, some studio APIs. This is the IWGX rendering API we picked and some dependencies like resource management. Finally, we have an MKB file. This is our Marmalade project file. It does things like includes the files, sets sub-projects, sets build options, and uniquely for Marmalade has a deployment section where we can set things like icons and asset sets to actually go onto a device. Back in our Hello World CPP file, let's take a look at the code. There's a main function. Main is the entry point for all Marmalade C++ projects. We initialize our IWGX library. We set a clear color to use. Then there's a main app loop. We clear the screen color. We can do some drawing here. Then we flush all of the drawing commands to the back buffer, swap the buffers to display on screen. And finally, as our app is terminating, we terminate IWGX. And you'll see we just return 0 at the bottom. Inside our main loop, you'll see four Marmalade-specific functions. You can tell they're Marmalade abstraction layer APIs because they start with the S3 prefix. The first one is device check quit request. This just checks if the OS or any user code has asked us to quit and then falls out of the loop. The keyboard and pointer update functions update internal flags for keyboard and pointer and touch. And then finally, S3 device yield is a function that we should call regularly just to make sure the OS has enough time to do background operations and interrupts. Right, let's actually display something on the screen. I'm going to use IWGX print string. This is a very simple print function that comes with IWGX. Uh, it's mostly used for debugging, but we can also use it in a release build. And we'll display our string at 100, 100, and say something simple like, 
Hello World seems appropriate. That's it, all the rest of our rendering stuff is already set up for us, so we just need to build and run. We'll run it in the simulator to test on desktop. Up the top here is a configuration dropdown. This shows all the different architectures that Marmalade supports. We're gonna run on this Intel uh, desktop here, so we'll pick x86, and then we just hit run and build. It'll build our code and then fire it up in Marmalade's desktop simulator. The simulator lets you configure it to mimic different kinds of devices. So for example, I can set the surface to any screen resolution. I can play with a pretend accelerometer here to change accelerometer inputs. I can set a fake location for the location APIs, or I could simulate suspend and resume events. We can also do live breakpoint debugging. So I can throw a breakpoint in here and then step through the code, look at the cool stack, remove my breakpoint and continue. Right, let's actually get this game onto a phone. Both iOS and Android, like most mobile platforms with Marmalade, use the GCC ARM architecture. So back in our configuration dropdown, we'll now pick GCC ARM debug and hit build. You can see it pulling in the GCC compiler to build our code. Now that it's built, we're actually gonna switch back to the hub to do the deployment. And then in platform here, I'm gonna start with iOS. So I'll pick iOS arm here. You'll see that the big deployment button at the top is green. That shows that it's picked up a build for the current architecture. And that's because we just made our GCC debug build. You'll also see down here, there is a new option called debug loader. So as well as picking the debug or release version of my app code, I can have debug or release versions of the abstraction layer code that's ready built for us. And actually I'm gonna to switch to a release build here for the device. You'll see the button's gone red because we haven't made a release build yet. If I hit the build button, I can build from the hub as well as the IDE. This will now build the GCC ARM binary for uh, iOS and for Android. And once it's finished, we'll push it to a device. So all I have to do is hit package and install. It'll package up the app code that we built with the iOS binaries and any assets and push it straight over USB to my iPad mini that I've got attached here. And here we can see it running on the iPad mini. We'll also do an Android build, so we'll pick Android ARM. You can see it's still green because we've already built our binaries. One thing we could do is set some configurations here. So under configuration edit, we can set things like icons and splash screens or advanced stuff like Android custom manifests. One thing here at the end is a generic option. So I could set a folder of icons and it will pick whatever the best icon is for the platform or device that I'm targeting. I'll pull out my iPad now and plug in my Nexus 4. One thing I had to do in advance here was to set up the debug drivers for the Nexus 4, but that was it. Hit package install and run. And it will package up for Android, make an APK, push that over USB and run it directly on the device. There we go. I'll pull that guy out. And finally, we'll make a Windows 8 build I'm actually gonna make a build for Windows Store 8.1, which I can install directly to the Surface Pro that I'm doing this demo on. Uh, you'll see it's red now because Windows Store uses a different architecture, but I'll just hit build to build for Windows Store. And one extra thing we have to do for Windows Store is that you have to set a, a publisher ID in order for it to sign the app for you. So I'll just go into the configuration we saw earlier, paste in my publisher ID, hit package install and run, and now it'll make an Apex file and actually install that directly into uh, the start menu on this computer. And there you can see our Hello World app running on the desktop, and if I pull up the start menu, you'll see it's just popped up as a regular app there. And there we have it, our Hello World app up and running on iOS, Android, and Windows devices from a single project and a single code base.